Hey, I know, the title doesn't really sound like one of those that makes you jump out of your chair. Git? What could possibly be so interesting about Git? Also, let's be honest, many people confuse it with GitHub or GitLab. Well, wake up, this is a totally different story. Here we are talking about something whose real impact we probably still haven't fully understood. Something that is, if not more powerful, certainly as great and fundamental as the Linux kernel. Because yes, we're not just talking about a program here. We're talking about the collective memory of the digital humanity. And maybe you think I'm exaggerating, that I'm using strong words, but it's not like that. And if you have a little patience, by the end of this video, you'll perfectly understand what I mean. As often happens, everything starts with a very real story. Once upon a time, there was a Finnish guy one of those slightly weird geniuses who kept inventing revolutionary things capable of changing forever the world we live in. Obviously, I'm talking about Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux. But in order to create his revolutions, to coordinate thousands of developers spread all over the world, Linus was using a program called BitKeeper, a proprietary software designed to manage the Linux kernel code. Because yes, big technology projects in the internet era need infrastructure to be managed. You can't just put all the developers in a room like an IBM's golden age. That model had collapsed long ago. Linus used BitKeeper a bit out of necessity, a bit reluctantly, until in 2005 the BitKeeper guys decided to complicate things. They started accusing Torvalds of code theft, of misconduct, of violations. Now, I'll say it straight, before making a genius angry, I'd think twice. And in fact, Linus Torvalds didn't answer with words. He did what he does best. He sat down at his computer, and in 10 days, he wrote Git. Yes, you heard me right. 10 days. And maybe you're still there thinking, what is this guy talking about? Git? Git what? Well, what is this tool? Let's start from the name, or rather the word, because Git in British informal slang is an insult. Nothing dramatic, but a derogatory term, a little mocking. It basically means idiot moron, jerk, pain in the ass, annoying person. It really depends on the tone, sometimes even in an affectionate or ironic way. But why did Linus Torvalds choose Git? He explained it himself with his usual irony. He said something like, I'm a selfish bastard, so I name all my projects with an offensive or self-ironic word. And in the official documentation of Git, Linus wrote several joking and provocative definitions like, stupid content tracker. Global Information Tracker, Goddamn Idiotic Truckload of Shit. In reality, Git is not an acronym. It doesn't mean anything technical. It's just Linus, with his caustic style, choosing a name that is short, is easy to remember, sounds good, and most of all, makes him laugh. Technically, Git is a distributed version control system. I know it sounds complicated, but it's much simpler than it seems. It was born to solve a very concrete problem managing a project where hundreds, thousands of developers work simultaneously on the same files from different parts of the world without every modification becoming an unmanageable mess. Before Git, there were other version control tools, but almost all worked in a centralized way. Basically, there was a main server with the project inside and developers would take and send back their changes there. Nice, right? Too bad that if that server went down, or if you lost your connection, or if disaster struck, you were screwed. Git completely turned this concept upside down. With it, every developer has a complete and identical copy of the whole project. Not only the current files, but the entire history, everything, every modification, every commit, every previous version. It's like always carrying the full archive of the project with you, even offline. And this changes everything because it means you can work quietly even without being connected to the internet. You can create new versions, experiment, go back, compare changes, merge other people's work, all without touching the central repository. But the genius of this system doesn't stop here. It works with a snapshot mechanism. Instead of saving only the differences between files like old systems used to do, Git takes a complete picture of the project state every time. It doesn't just save what changed, it saves everything exactly as it was at that moment in a super efficient way. And this snapshot is identified by a unique code, mathematically calculated, called hash. Basically, if even a single comma changes in a file, Git notices, generates a new hash, and tracks it forever. 
This makes Git incredibly secure, reliable, and fast. Not only that, thanks to this structure, it's practically impossible to corrupt the system. You can't cheat. You can't falsify the project history without someone noticing. And then there's another huge advantage, branches. In Git, creating a branch, a parallel copy of the project to experiment or add new features, is incredibly fast. You can have dozens, hundreds of branches, try things, go back, merge everything calmly, something that before was a nightmare. Git completely transformed a huge problem, managing large-scale software projects, into something simple, clean, and safe. It gave developers total freedom without losing control. And you know what? I personally see some interesting parallels between Git and Bitcoin's blockchain. Not in how they technically work, they are totally different worlds, but in the concept. Both rely on a shared, immutable, distributed history. Both guarantee transparency and security starting from a decentralized logic. And that's also why within just a few years, Git became the absolute standard worldwide. But here comes the funny part. Linus Torvalds had absolutely no intention of managing this project forever. For him, Git was just a temporary solution, a technical problem to solve quickly and move on. So what does he do? About three months after the first official release, Linus hands over the responsibility of the project to another developer, Yunio Hamano, one of Git's very first contributors. Hamano takes over the project and starts shaping it, cleaning up the code, Simplifying the commands, because at the beginning they were pure nerd stuff. Writing documentation, guides, and generally making it more accessible. And thanks to him, this tool grows up and becomes mature, ready to conquer the world. Outside the Linux ecosystem, developers start realizing its potential. After the Linux kernel, one of the first major projects to adopt Git was Xdorg in 2006, the graphical server for Unix environments. And from there, the revolution really took off. First, all of the open source world adopts it, then smaller companies, and eventually, the tech giants. Google is actually the first big private company to adopt Git for its open source projects. Then Facebook and Twitter integrate it deeply into their workflows. And in 2008 comes the real game changer. GitHub is born. GitHub takes this technology, brings it online, makes it simple, makes it social and collaborative. And this is the move that transforms Git from a technical tool for nerds to a global platform for anyone writing code. From that moment on, Git becomes the worldwide standard. Microsoft, which for years had its own version control system, TFEC, ends up embracing Git completely. In fact, Microsoft's own repository is now the largest project hosted on GitHub in terms of size and complexity. This shift was solidified when on June 4, 2018, Microsoft announced its acquisition of GitHub for $7.5 billion in stock, a deal that was completed on October 26, 2018. This strategic move aimed to strengthen Microsoft's commitment to developer freedom, openness, and innovation, further integrating GitHub's vast developer community into Microsoft's ecosystem. Today, everyone uses it. Everyone learns it. Everyone assumes that a modern software project must be managed this way. But be careful. GitHub is just the most famous platform. There are many alternatives. The most important one is GitLab, hugely popular with companies because you can install it wherever you want and have total control. Then there's Bitbucket, used especially by teams working with Atlassian tools like Jira or Trello. And there are fully open source solutions like Gidea or Codeberg. And let's not forget GT, a Chinese platform directly supported by their government for technological independence reasons. Still, despite all these alternatives, GitHub dominates the market. Today, about 94% of developers worldwide use Git as their version control system. And over 90% of the world's largest companies, I'm talking about the Fortune 100, use GitHub to manage their projects. Alternatives exist, they are valid, they have their own fans, but the truth is that GitHub has become the center of the Git galaxy. And here comes the most beautiful thing, the one we should always remember. Git is the technology. GitHub is just a service. The real strength of Git is that it's free. It belongs to you. It belongs to everyone. You can use it wherever you want, however you want, without depending on anyone. And that's exactly why it was born, to never again be hostage to proprietary software, to never again end up in the hands of someone who can take everything away from you overnight. 
like what happened to Torvalds with BitKeeper. And it's incredible to think that all of this, this entire revolution, happened because Linus Torvalds, pissed off over a matter of principle, locked himself in at home, and in 10 days wrote a piece of software that forever changed the history of software development. 10 days. And maybe, maybe it's exactly in these genius level angry moments that open source shows its most beautiful face. Thanks for watching, thanks for being here, and above all, thanks for being part of this story.